Are you sure that Flight 107 from London has landed? Yes, sir. Half an hour ago. Well, that's very funny because I'm supposed to meet somebody off that flight. Look, you haven't got a message for me from a Mr. Eddie Booth, have you? No, sir. And what time's the next flight from London due in? Not until this evening. Oh, I can't hang around here all day. Look, my name's Marley. If Mr. Booth should show up, could you ask him to come out to this address? He's going to work for me. Yes, Mr. Marley. Thank you. I hope nothing's happened to him. Well, a drink? Oh, that's very kind of you. I'll have two eats. Look, I'll see how many you have. <laughs> what are you having to drink? Two E's. It's a beer. Oh, oh, that's a funny accent you've got. Yeah, well, I'm from... Uh, but, 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 don't tell me. Don't tell me, because I'm red hot on accents. Now, just say something else. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> all right. Uh, well, it's a real nice day here today in Australia. Got it. Birmingham. <laughs> Sydney. Oh, you're an Aussie. There, yeah, Jim Lawson today. Oh, nice to meet you. Eddie Boo. Well, come on, me old sport. It's real beaut to meet a fair dink and Bruce like yourself. Good on you, mate. <laughs> I've got news for you. We don't talk like that here in Australia. Of course you do. I I've, I've seen it on telly. I used to watch Flying Doctor, you know. Flying Doctor. Flying Doctor and a wagga wagga. Come in, sport. <laughs> here you are. Salo. That'll be a dollar eighty. Yes. How much is that in real money? Pardon? Uh, I wonder what they're all doing now. Wonder what he's doing now. Arthur, Nobby, Jacko. <laughs> Good lads. Do you know what, Sam? When they knew I was coming over here, the committee organised a collection as a token of their appreciation for my 13 years as club secretary. They gave me a cheque. Yeah? How much for? Two pounds thirty. What's the matter with him? Is he you? No. Drunk. I heard that. Where are we anyway? Australia. Australia? Now arriving from San Francisco by Honolulu and Nandi. Excuse me. I'm looking for the information desk. Verzeihung, ich kann Sie nicht verstehen. Sprechen Sie Deutsch. Deutsch? Not bloody likely. Excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, non parlo inglese. Eh, siamo Guardi, italiani. Siamo italiani, noi, eh? non parliamo affatto inglese. Stiamo qui aspettando la... Eh, siamo eh, italiani. Ma eh, che c'è di male, scusi? Siamo italiani. Ah, dai, dai, dai. Siamo italiani. Siamo italiani. Stiamo aspettando l'aereo. Get the eaters. Ah. Excuse me, cop. No speak English. <laughs> <laughs> Would you believe it? More bloody foreigners here than in London. Let's be having here. Yup. Anybody in? May I help you, sir? <laughs> Twelve thousand miles to meet another. <laughs> so they didn't let your lot in this country. A few of us have managed to infiltrate. Bloody typical. Why do you stay in your own country, where you belong? Well, if you must know, the reason I left my own country is that there were too many blacks there. Ah, yes. Then what part of the black continent was that? England. <laughs> Look, tell me, are there any messages for me? I'm supposed to be met by Mr. Marley. Is your name Booth, sir? It is. Mr. Marley did leave a message. He said he was sorry, but he couldn't wait. And could you find your way out to his workshop? I would if I knew the address. He left the address here. <laughs> I can't read that. Shout it out. I'll write it down. Marley Engineering. Hang on, hang on. They got me quill out. <laughs> right, go on, son. Marley Engineering. Marley Engineering. Wattle Street. Wattle Street. Blacktown. Blacktown. <laughs> Blacktown. Love thy name. 
neighbor Walk up and say, how be ya? Gee, but I'm glad to see your pal House tricks, what's new? Love thy neighbor Offer to share his burden Tell him to say the word and you'll see him through Especially if there should be a beautiful girl next door Say to the girl next door Don't think I'm bold, my mother told me to love thy neighbor be tired after your long trip. Ah, oh, you know, Mr. Marley, just a, a touch of the old jet lag. Yes, that can be a problem. Well, there's no point in you starting work straight away. You'll need a chance to unpack, get acclimatized, have a look around, see a bit of Sydney. Thank you. Let's see, it's uh, half past three. Well, there's no sense in you coming to work before tomorrow morning, eight o'clock. <laughs> uh, Jim's back. He's just called in on his way home. Oh, good. Ask him to drop in for a minute, would you please, Joyce? You might as well meet your uh, foreman while you're here. Oh. Come in, Jim. <laughs> Good day, Joe. I can't say it's nice to be back. <laughs> <coughs> you. Small world, isn't it? You two know each other? Yeah. We met at the airport. Oh, good. Eddie's bound to feel a bit strange for a start, Jim. I know you'll be happy to straighten him out. It'll be my pleasure. And this is the dining room, kitchen's through there, and this is the lounge room. Uh, well, Mr. Booth, do you like what you see? Uh, how long have you been here? About six months. Ah. Have you, uh, have you cracked it yet? <laughs> I'll get it, Bernard. Oh, that's probably our next door neighbour. He can be a bit of a pest sometimes, but he's not a bad bloke, really. He's not black, is he? Oh, no. Well, in that case, he couldn't possibly be worse than the neighbour I had for six years in England. You want a bet, Bobby? <laughs> well, Eddie, this is our club. Ah, oh, yes. They're very nice when they do it up. <laughs> what are you drinking, Bernard? Tomato juice, thanks. Say it again. Tomato juice? That's what I thought you said. I don't drink a lot, really. Bloody Nora, you're going to be a bundle of fun. <laughs> Will the service be square? I'll go and get us a table. Yeah, it's a good idea. Say, barman. <laughs> I'm Eddie Booth from Manchester. I'm English. Go on. I'd have never guessed you were a pom. Oh, well, there's a lot of us about. Yeah. Too bloody many. <laughs> you know the difference between the Yanks and the Aussies? No. Well, the Yanks got all the black slaves, and we got all the white pommies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should be grateful. You know why we got the poms? Go on, educate me. Because the Yanks got first choice. <laughs> Am I supposed to laugh? Please yourself. 
Well, I'll tell you something, clever clocks. Do you know that the average Englishman has an IQ of 140? So what? Well, you tell me what has got an IQ of 200. Surprise me. 200 Australians. <laughs> 200 Australians. fifty. <clears throat> yeah. And a donkey for yourself. Pony. All right, a pony. No I'll have a schooner. You can have a bloody yacht if you like, but I'm not playing. <laughs> Come on, cough up. Oh, all right, all right. Give him a drink, will you? You don't wait to be us, do you? No, not when somebody else is buying. Uh, hey, are, Jim. Thank you, Cyril. Cyril? <laughs> Cyril? Cheers, Pommy. <clears throat> Cheers, Cyril. <laughs> Yeah, I'll burn it. Get that down here, son. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Is it all right? <sighs> Tastes different, but I like it. Good. I take it that was your wife on the phone this evening. Yes, that was my Joan. Are you married? No. Oh. Have you got a girlfriend? No. No, I'm right off, women. <laughs> <laughs> You're, uh, you're not one of them, are you? I'm divorced. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. Eighteen years I was married. Eighteen years of nagging, arguing and abuse. Oh, dear, she sounds terrible. No, that was me. <laughs> what about you, Bernard? Yes, please. Pardon? Same again. <laughs> He's like a bloody gunner. Shall we have another? I thought you were anxious to get back. No. It's my shout, and if I want another, I will have another. Well said, Bernard. Very masterful. Thanks, Eddie. Can you lend me five bucks? <laughs> Here, get hold of that. Ta. Same again, Cyril. <laughs> hey, Snow White. And then Paul McCartney went to Scotland. <laughs> Get that down here. Cheers. Cheers. Well, there you are, fellas. Who orders those? You did. Oh. oh, excuse me. Where are you going? The Dunny. <laughs> What's he talking about? He's got to shake hands with the unemployed. <laughs> Why can't you say so? Why can't you speak proper English like what we do? Because we're Australian. Bloody colonial. Now don't start that again. It's a great country to be born in. Yes. Well, I hope I don't bloody die here. <laughs> that can be arranged. Now, look, we've all got to go one day. Very true. Hello, he's back again. How do you feel, son? I've just thrown a seven. <laughs> Pardon? He, he means he's been sick. Oh. Have another drink, make you feel better. Oh. <laughs> we was just talking about diet. What colour? <laughs> Not that sort of dying. Snuffing it. Well, I think I'm going to snuff it. Oh, shut up and get your drink down. It'll be all right. I wonder where you go when you die. Nobody knows, because none of us have ever been. And nobody has ever come back. Nobody's ever come back. Well, that's where you're both wrong, because my friend Tommy came back. Ah, oh, pull the other one! It's true. What happened? Well, I'll tell you if you listen. See, I was walking past his house one evening when I noticed there was eight bottles on his doorstep. Bottles of milk? No, Guinness. He always had two for his breakfast. Anyway, I climbed in through the back window, and there was Tommy lying on the floor as stiff as a poker. Must have been a shock. It was, it was. Anyway, I sent for old Dr. Parker. When he came, he took one look at Tommy and sent for the undertaker. <laughs> oh, they did him up beautifully. Do you know, I've never seen Tommy look so well lying there in his coffin in the best room. You mean the front parlour? No, the back room at the Lion and Lamp. You had the coffin in a pub? Well, why not? He spent more time there than he did at home. <laughs> anyway, it was there that the miracle happened. Charlie Cunliffe shouted out, It's my turn, what you're all having. 
And Tommy sat up in his coffin and said, I'll have a pint. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's a bit far-fetched. It's true. I was there. I saw it happen. Yeah, well, he, he couldn't have been dead in the first place. Old Dr. Parker said he was. Mind you, I will admit he could have been drunk. You mean Tommy? No, old Dr. Parker. <laughs> Listen, listen, I didn't come down in the last shower, and neither did he. You can scoff, but Tommy would bear me out if he were here. God rest his soul. <laughs> well, what do you mean, God rest his soul? You said he come back to life. He did. But when we found out he was still alive, we were all so chuffed we got roaring drunk. And Tommy was knocked down on his way home by the herd. <laughs> he didn't come back again? No, no, this time he'd definitely gone. Speaking of God, I think it's time we all went. It's early yet. No, look, it, it, it's nearly half past eleven. I'll see you blokes tomorrow. Mm. Not if I see you first. <laughs> oh. What's the matter with you, son? You're not about to throw another seven, are you? We should have been back hours ago. What's Joyce gonna say? Well, if it's anything like my Jones, she'll say, look at the state you're in, what time do you call this, and I'm going home to Mother. This will be our first quarrel. Ah, uh, never mind, Bernard. Think of the fun you'll have making it up. We better go. Sit down. There's no point in going home now. There's no point in shutting the stable door after you've spilt the milk. <laughs> you, if you go home now, Joyce will go raving mad. But if you wait a while, we can sneak back and creep in. That way you won't get in half as much aggro tomorrow morning. Are you sure? Definitely. Same again, Cyril. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, time he can grow down, spot. Time he can grow down. Time he can grow down, spot. I can grow down. Cha, cha, cha. <laughs> you and I tell. We're not at home. Oh, no, don't no. want to wake her up. No, no, don't want to wake her up. No. Is this the house? I think so. Yes. Have you got your key? Uh. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh never mind, never mind. We'll go around the back. Alright. <laughs> don't wake her up. No way. Don't wake her up. Stop saying that. Like a bloody minor bird. Oh. Hop <laughs> me some of jewels on the top. <laughs> Come in, bird. Where's it gone? Uh, but he's stay out, bird. <laughs> How the hell did you get in there? <laughs> I went into bed. Oh. Oh, Cheers, Eddie. Cheers, son. <laughs> ah. Now for my burglar deterrent system. Oh, dear. What a mind you've got, Eddie. Brilliant. <sighs> String. <laughs> Eddie? 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 Ah, oh, the great Galari has gone out and left the lights on. <laughs> oh. Cheers, Eddie. Bloody thing in this place. <laughs> oh, dear me. The string. You can have a bit of string, won't you? Anybody there? <laughs> <laughs> Cigarettes, matches, meat pies, beer, toilet rolls. 
And no interruptions. Ah. Oh. <laughs> like Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Larry, that bird has forgotten his key again. You know, sometimes I think you've got your brains in your bum. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I, I thought it was a neighbourhood kid. Is Bernard in, please? No, no. He's just nicked out with Jim to pick up some cricket gear. Um, would it be all right if I wait for them? Certainly. <laughs> But you come in here. You ready? One, two, three, inside! <laughs> What's all the secrecy about? All I want to know is if you're coming for a drink. Not only will I come down for a drink, but I will buy you one to celebrate. Celebrate what? Have the Aussies won a test? <laughs> I've grown something very unusual. Yeah, well, don't worry, it doesn't show. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. What is it? It's a toes. A what? A toes. T-O-S-E. Never heard of it. It's a cross between a tulip and a rose. <laughs> and that's why I've called it a toes. Of course, I could have called it a ruler, but I prefer toes. <laughs> well, what do you think? I think you're going around the bloody bend. <laughs> it's what you call cross-pollination. You see, I took a feather and put it inside a tulip and waggled it about until it was full of pollen. Then I stuck the feather inside a rose and pollenized it. You dirty devil. <laughs> this is going to make me famous, mate. It's the only one of its kind in the world. I think it's wrong. <laughs> what a God. Somebody's turned the healing on, fool. What stupid idiot's done that? It was this stupid idiot. Stand back. You can't go in there, Eddie. I must. I must save little Eddie. <laughs> You've done it. I've had it. No. Are you ready for your breakfast? Uh, yeah, but I'll just dip down and get a newspaper first, dear. Well, don't be long. Take Bernard's car. Oh, uh, won't he be needing it? He won't be going anywhere today. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, well. If it isn't Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> Nicker. Hey, you sure you can drive that thing? Of course I can. Compare with me, your Jack Brabham's an amateur. <laughs> What's the matter now? What's the matter now? Look at me car! Belt up. I only touched it. Yeah, you know what? I'll have a look at it when I come back. Well... You shouldn't have parked it there in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> others with scorn we're only here cause we're born although you're way up 
you may not stay up Stop tooting your horn Why boast of the wealth you possess High on the hill of success On friendship you never should frown You'll need the same friends On the weary way down Oh, love thy neighbor Walk up and say, how be you? Gee, but I'm glad to see a pal house quick What's new? Love thy neighbor Offer to share his burden Tell him to say the word and You will see him through Especially if there should be A beautiful girl next door Say to that girl next door Now don't think I'm bold But my mother told me to love thy neighbor And you will find your labor A great deal easier Life will be breezier if you love thy neighbor beautiful girl next door You can say to that girl next door Now don't think I'm bold But my mama told me to love thy neighbor And you will find your labor A great deal easier Life will be breezier if You love thy neighbor This place all to myself. Yeah, not bad. <laughs>